you know what the best camera is when you come on a great photograph? It's the one you have in your hand. And unfortunately, all of us have a camera on our phone in our hand most of the time. So it's crazy not to understand how to take your phone and make it into a better tool, a better camera, than just pointing and shooting. And we're gonna go through some principles that'll teach you how to do that, to give you some tools to make some better pictures on your iPhone or your smartphone using an app, Visco, or the portrait mode on your iPhone. Here at the Stun Lens, we're really big on business. So get over to thestunlens.com and buy our business downloads. It's 16 segments that so will help you shape your business. Plus it comes with a group call in once a month with me where you can ask all your questions. So get over to thestunlens.com today. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slime Lens, we're downtown here at the Disney Concert Hall. We've shot down here a lot. I've got Jenna here with me. She's fabulous. We're gonna take some pictures with our iPhone on a new app called Visco. I'm using Visco because it's a free app. It's a great place to start. It starts to give you control of your phone. It helps turn your phone into a camera, not just something you point and shoot. That's what you want. The ability to create better color because you have white balance uh, capabilities. You've got a shutter so you can change the shutter so you can blur or you can have, freeze the shutter better. It gives you more control over your image. Let's look at seven design principles that will really help your images look so much better. Using leading lines, using the rule of thirds, look for natural light, use strong negative space, use that frame within the frame, look for great color contrast and last of all, great texture. So let's relate these seven design principles to the app we have on our phone. I'll use a few shots also in the portrait mode in the actual camera on the iPhone, because I love that because it has a shallow depth of field and I like that look as well. The reason we chose these seven principles is not because they just relate to the iPhone, but because your iPhone, you're shooting that smaller format and most people shoot very busy pictures. We want you to simplify your pictures, make them more design oriented. So let's look at these seven design principles using the app Visco on our iPhone or your smartphone. Let's get started and see what we can do. So leading lines just give you that they lead into your subject matter or they can converge on your subject, ma subject matter. They just give you a strong design element that makes your image a lot more interesting. These are simple leading lines. We don't want them to be very busy. We want them to just be a very simple line that leads us into our subject matter. So I let those lines just kind of come right across her head here. So I'm going to get in really tight and let those lines kind of come right and dissect, almost dissect her head. Even the sidewalk is working really well. So look past me here, Jenna, like in there. There you go. So those leading lines are supposed to direct the viewer to my subject matter. I like those leading lines to come in from the camera left side and come up to my viewer because that's a natural kind of progression. You look from left to right, so those lines kind of sweep in from the left and come to my, view, uh, to my subject matter on the right. I like that. You can push against that natural viewing tendency, but I don't think it flows as nicely to go from right to left. But those leading lines should lead us into our subject matter. It's a strong design concept to get your subject matter to the right or the left of the frame. That's a rule of thirds. Get them in one of those corners. Don't center your subject matter all the time. Get them over in the corner. It's much more interesting. And those leading lines are gonna push people right back to your subject matter. That's the kind of thing we want. Okay, so I've got Jenna right in the middle of my frame here. I've got leading lines all over the place, but they're not leading us anywhere when I center her like this. But if I push her over to the left, I have her look over her right shoulder just out a little bit. Not that much, Jenna. Come back just a little more to me. There you go, right in there. Now I've got those leading lines. I've got her in my upper right-hand corner. They lead into her face. She looks back and pushes us back at the beginning of the viewing experience once again. On the app, you can click on it to give you the rule of thirds. It gives you the cross marks to help you understand where to put your subject matter and to design the frame a little better. I think that's a great thing to turn on and to use. So this is really pretty natural light. I mean, we got the sun, it's a little hard on our face, but it's starting to get just on that building there. So it's starting to soften out a little bit. And it's also bouncing out of that building in the background, giving me a rim on her hair, which, lo which looks wonderful. So I've got this big sky, soft light here, natural light. I want my subject to be looking that direction. If I turn her around, she's gonna be completely silhouetted in shadow. I want her looking into that soft light, because right now it's soft enough that it gives me a really beautiful luminosity on her face but doesn't overpower her, doesn't create heavy shadows, just really, really pretty. So a lot of this is time of day. The, the sun is low, it's this beautiful magic hour, but the reality is, if you look around even in, at sun straight up in the sky, you can, find a time, you can find a beautiful pool of light where it's bouncing off from a building, where in the shade and it's reflecting back in. You can find natural, beautiful light everywhere you go. So you can work on that thought. Natural occurring light is what we're after. 
So we're gonna go on to our next spot. Negative space is such a strong design principle because it gives you a way to isolate your subject. It gives you a way to put them on a field that makes them so important in the frame by giving them all this negative space around them. Or a huge negative space that points our viewer to your single figure. People always look at people. So you can use this large open empty space and then you have a small figure on the horizon. People will look right to that because it becomes the strongest prevalent piece in the image. This is really a lot of uh, negative space here. Just letting this kind of foreground, foreground kind of envelops the uh, viewer in the front and then gives us a nice negative space payoff of her in the background with her looking out into that natural light. I love the focus on this app because I can choose what's in focus and so I'm gonna put her in focus right at the top of the stairs there, it looks great. Fabulous negative space. We've got all this great area. Just see her little silhouette in the bottom and that gives us just a wonderful look. So it's kind of a frame in a frame in a frame. I mean, I'm framing her in the doorway. She's looking at me in the doorway. So we got that frame in a frame. What that does is it calls attention to the subject matter. You create a frame around what you'd like the person to look at. It's a way to direct the viewer. This is what I want you to see. So we're doing a frame in a frame. It looks really pretty. So our next principle is color contrast. Here we've got a great green carpet. We've got beautiful, natural, soft light. So it just gives everything a, just a, a really even kind of look, but she stands out against that green grass because she's got that caramel sweater on, she's got the orange, and just gives her, especially her black hair against that green, just gives great color contrast, makes for a startling image. Now it's simple though, because you got a big field of green with her against the, uh, that green, so it looks really nice. Texture is really an interesting way to apply a simple background in a complex way. So why do we use texture? Texture are patterns, patterns that we find every day in life that are going to give us a contrast to our subject matter. Texture can be dangerous if it becomes too overpowering, but if used correctly, it really gives a lot of depth and interest to the image and helps stand our subject out from the background. So we just got great texture here. Texture of the whole road in the background. It helps her, she got the color contrast there as well as the uh, white. A texture in the background and she stands out in two different ways here. You got the texture and her color contrast. It's just a beautiful uh, setup here. And also I took the lines, I didn't square them up. I put them on an angle so that they're looking off and it kind of leads out. You can combine many of these principles to make a great image, but our goal is to make simple images, not complicated images. So combining a lot of them, if it makes it complicated, it's probably the wrong thing to do. But combining simple principles to give us a beautiful, strong designed image is our goal. When you're using strong design principles, it's pretty easy to tell if your image looks good because in that small little thumbnail that you're looking at in the Visco app, it's gonna show up and look good in that. Because strong design principles usually mean simple, clean images and you're going to see it almost immediately. When you blow it up, you can look at them a little further for are her eyes closed or are her eyes open. But if they look strong and they look good in that little thumbnail, it's probably a pretty strong image. So next in this process is editing on the iPhone. We're gonna do that as a separate lesson so we can come back and really show you the process of getting in and editing each of these images using the presets that are already in the application or just getting in and in the raw, being able to change the saturation, do some of the things that will help make your images look stronger. Editing becomes just about as strong a process as shooting and in the end is gonna give you a much better result. So there you have it. With that free app from Visco and with the camera on your phone, there is no excuse why you can't take great pictures if you apply some good design principles. So when you take great pictures with your iPhone, get on our Facebook group, post them so we can see them, see what you're doing, see what apps you're using, see how they're turning out, we wanna know. Also, you can always hashtag us at the Slide of Lands on our Instagram. We wanna get those hashtags, hashtag JP's Banana Socks, hashtag keep on clicking, hashtags the Slide of Lands, hashtags, 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 hash browns, hashtags. Then we also have Jenna with us, Hey, yes, you can follow me on Instagram at Jenna Wallacek. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. It's March and we're giving away a Tamron 35mm one point lens. This is an Instagram contest, so you gotta get over to Instagram, follow us, the Slider Lens on Instagram, and Tamron, and that enters you to win. You can also, in the comments, tag a friend. That'll help you win as well. You can also do a story saying, I'm about to win this awesome lens, and tag Tamron and the Slider Lens, and that'll enter you to win as well. And last of all, you can go to thesliderlens.com and give us your email, that'll help you win as well. So get out there, tag, follow, email, tag, follow, email, tag, follow, email, and win this lens.